But now, let's move into video games. Vision games. Former Konami executive joins Kojima Productions, and we we've documented this quite well. Yeah, uh, we've documented it for quite some time. The whole Kojima Konami rift and everything. Uh, Shin Sh- Shinji <laughs> Hirano, former president, former president of Konami Europe, lists president of Ko- lists as president of Kojima Productions as his current job. On his LinkedIn profile, that's pretty big. Uh, spotted by the coalition, it looks as it looks as that's his thought. <laughs> Come yeah. on, IGN. Come on. Looks Proof as though. Read. Anyway, it looks as though Toronto like has message. been president for <laughs> at least a month with a start date of November 2016. The listing shows that he left his position at Konami in March after a year as corporate officer, division director, sales division. Corporate officer, division director, sales division. That doesn't make any sense. But anyway, for Konami at its headquarters in Tokyo, rumors uh, of a split between Metal Gear Solid creator Hideo Kojima and Konami first began to surface in March 2015 with the news later being confirmed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so that's pretty interesting that a head of Konami is now a head of Kojima Productions. That is very interesting. Um, so apparently that... Uh, Shinji and Kojima had a good relationship yeah. for him to poach him over, which he poached his whole team um, from <laughs> Konami, Konami, which is good. Ab- which it's deserved because Konami, Konami, Konami dicked over Kojima oh, yeah. big time, oh, yeah. and and they deserve everything that's coming to them because mm-hmm. life is a circle; things always come back. Yep. Yeah, like a boomerang. And if you watch Jim Sterling, you know what I want to say right now, but we try to keep the show as clean as possible. So, Konami. There you yeah. go. Konami. There's a verb there. That you Knuckle mean. puck. Konami. Um, speaking of Japanese game developers, we have a question from Adam Gumbert. And I, y'all might not know the story, so I'll, I'll read his question and then I'll talk about it a little bit. Do you feel the way that Final, Final Fantasy XV is being handled as good or bad? On one hand, there are constant updates adding new features, fee, free content all the time. Uh, on others, some people see it as they've released an unfinished game and are slowing, slowly adding things that should have been in from the jump, like a story that makes sense and such. Thoughts? Um, so... Back in, uh, it should have released in September, Mm -hmm. the game, and the director of the game said, we're pushing it back because we want to make sure that the game that is released is 100% complete. That way, people that do not have internet connection get the full game experience. Right. Um, The game came out in November, and there were problems because, one... They didn't have the full story in there. Um, you have to pretty much watch an anime, like two anime movies, to get what's even going on. Um, so day one, they had a four or five gig patch. Okay. Yeah, go figure. And then they came out this last week that they are going back and fixing problems with Chapter 13 and to put in more... Um, more missions and more story uh, and to flesh out some stuff with some characters that got laid left by the wayside. And all of this is going to be free, like Adam was talking about, but we go back to their statement in September, yep. and it was, oh, we're pushing this back. And we talked about this, I'm sure, that we're pushing this back so everybody gets the full game when it comes out. And that's bollocks. That's 100% bollocks on that. Did we just teleport across the pond? I'm I'm confused. (laughs) Should I change my accent? (laughs) (laughs) So uh, what it gets me is, okay, I appreciate someone, you know, saying, okay, we're going to fix it. We're going to put out, you know, stuff to make it a better experience. And it's all free. It's all free. But there are a lot of people that's already played the game, that's experienced the game as it is, and... It's a pretty long game. And it's an unfinished product that they finished. Yeah, and we are constantly getting games that are having day one patches and going to have this and going to have that and that and that. 
but we're getting games that are broken when we get them. Exactly, and back when we had cartridges and stuff like that, you had no connection to the internet, so the, ga- the it might have taken them a while to get the game out, but they got you the complete game, and it was complete. And I don't think there's been a game that I have bought within the last few years that has been perfect day no. one that we've yeah you know that later you didn't have to download a patch right when you, pl- as, when as you put you it in plug you you insert your disc it it, it, disc. it takes for or if you download digitally or whatever it, it downloads all the way and you're and like oh, oh again. I'm, i can finally play my game oh you need to download this thirty thousand gigabyte here to take this what's that why, why can't you you pushed it back however many months and two then months. Two to months. Polish and fix everything. And you're like, oh, so we can have a complete game. And then you're going to be like, yeah, about that. Here's this patch. Sorry. Don't say that it's going to be complete if you have no intention of releasing it as a complete game. Yeah, you know, and they, sh- Square Enix should admit that, hey, that was just a PR spin. We screwed up. We yeah. dropped the ball. And they have it. And I, th- I think that's a big part of it. Um, you know, it's part of the culture now. Day one DLC is going to happen. No, not day one DLC, but day one patch is going to happen one way or another. I'm glad to see that they are trying to fix what is wrong with the game and doing it for free. But it comes to a point where it should be happening regardless. you know. And for me, I'm going to wait a few months until the game's completely done before I even think about playing. I know a lot of people have asked me about it and Last Guardian, and I'm like... I have no intents or purposes of playing either one of those. A little bit on Final Fantasy when it's complete. Last Guardian, I don't give a crap. I would say I want to play Final Fantasy, but like I've watched gameplay, I've watched trailers of The Last Guardian, and it's just not a game that interests me. Well, it's it's clunky. It's a PS2 game that's on the PS4, and a lot of people are not happy with it. Um, But what gets me is all of this is going on for Final Fantasy, and it's the people are so blinded by some of the stuff that it, it is in discussions for game of the year. Um, so that, that kind of has a problem with me a yeah. little bit that all of this is going on and you don't necessarily have the full experience. So how can you, how can you say it's the game of the year? Yeah. So it's dumb. That That's my biggest thing with that. So hopefully they'll get some of that fixed. Um, but you know, what's a game that, you sort of get some of it, and then you pay for it, and then you get a little bit more of it. Mario Run? Yeah! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah! So, do, do, Mario do, do, Run do, 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 do. came out this week. Mm-hmm. It's now on iOS. It's not on Android, so you need to just get you an iOS. It will eventually come out there. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo's first ever Mario game for a mobile is currently the top grossing app in the U.S. App Store, beating Mobile Strike, Pokemon Go, and Netflix. There is the, there is no information yet on exactly how many times Super Mario Run has been downloaded. Its initial success, success should be an encouraging sign for Nintendo. Now, a uh, free version of Super Mario Run will easily hit 1 billion downloads, which I don't doubt at all. No. What's interesting, before we get into what we like about Super Mario Run, the um, shares for Nintendo actually went down the day that Mario Run went out, which is very interesting because they went up when Pokemon Go went out. That is very interesting. Hmm. So, and it, it was a pretty large, it was enough percentage that they lost a few million dollars, like a, a considerable amount of money. So, it's very interesting that um, the success that's fixing to happen is preemptively hit with shares going down, people sh- selling a lot of shares. I'm sure they'll be back up. I mean, it, it, it's. I mean, the way that 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 market runs, it, it it's in a constant state of flux. So yeah, you're down one week and then you're up the next. So the game is is pretty fun. I will. I will I've, I've enjoyed it. Um, I right now am only on the free the free version of it because I haven't felt like paying ten dollars. I'm trying to milk as much I can out of the, the free, free version. version. Um. I think it's fun. Some of the times it doesn't respond the way I'm wanting it to respond. Like with the jumping, I'm like, well, I told you to bigger jump. But, you know, I think that might be user error. I don't think I've had a, too many issues with that. 
Yeah, I haven't either. So it, it's more than likely a user error, but it looks good. It runs really it well. Mm-hmm. Um, you're in that universe, and I think having depth in it, like building your kingdom and everything, and doing the Toad Rally is pretty interesting. Um, what are y'all thoughts on it? You go ahead. I I've enjoyed it. It's definitely going to be a game that I, I I've when I've played games on. Uh, my phone. I've hardly ever bought one. Yeah, I might have spent a little money here and there on in-game stuff, but this will definitely be a game that I will probably come out and buy outright at the beginning. It's been super fun. Super. Not only because it's Super Mario or anything like that, but it's just I like how <laughs> it, it's constantly running. You don't have to worry about that, so you don't have to worry about playing with two hands or anything. It's a game that you could just sit there and play you know, with one hand, both hands if you want, double tap, you know, it's whatever. But killing Goombas again, especially on your phone where you could take it anywhere, and from what I've seen so far, it doesn't use a lot of data either. I, I'm not I'm not sure. It's, conti- it's consistently connected, though. Like, you have to be connected. Yeah, but I'm saying, I, I think it's like Pokemon Go where it doesn't use a lot of data. Because like I haven't, like, I've only played at home, so I haven't. I can't attest to that yet. So, Derek, you you've got the full game. What is your experience so far? You've actually got to beat the boss of the first level because I have it because it stopped. <laughs> well, twenty <with>, seconds. <laughs> well, with me, even before I really got into it, I went ahead and bought it because mm-hmm. I knew I was going to play through the whole thing anyway. So, yeah. I'm like, I might as well go ahead and get the whole yeah. thing out of the way. It's a lot of fun. The, for those who don't really know how you play the game, it's just Mario constantly running through a level, and you can only control like how high he jumps. Mm-hmm. But I think it's perfect for the mobile platform. Yeah. yeah, It's a lot of fun. It has the look of the new Super Mario Brothers games, but it's they feel like the old games as well. Mm-hmm. I think anybody who's a Nintendo fan should absolutely get it and at least try the free version. And if you want to get the paid version, then great. Yeah. But it's, I don't really play any mobile games, but this has been a lot of fun. Um, I actually put on my on the Nerd Cave Facebook page my friend code. So if anybody wants to compare scores, just uh, find that and, uh, and add me. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and what's interesting is each level has like three like depths to it like you have your purple coins i mean your pink coins your purple coins and your black coins mm-hmm. so you've if you want you know to go in and 100 percent each level mm-hmm. like it's going to take some time because each one gets more difficult yeah. as it goes uh even some of the world one levels they're hard to get yeah i know i've only got purple coins in the first two so like to get all three all five yeah. of them or whatever so it gets harder and harder yeah. as you go and you're just like okay let's try this again <laughs> and like when you miss one like i just restart because i'm like i want all of them at one time yeah now. so it's it's i like that there's depth to it and i like the competitive part of it with That's the toad fun. rally mm-hmm. like getting more and more toads and, and you s- and what's cool about that is you see the person too like where he's at with you beside you because it shows like the shadow yeah. the yeah and, and so you you can be like, well, I've already lost this one because it's like he hasn't died or he's got the rainbow. And I mean, it's now the cool. Toad Rally, I haven't really got into yet. I've it's just fine. been doing the main worlds, but it looks fun. It yeah, is. it's fun. And I, I think that's a cool part because you're not like physically competing against somebody. Like, it's, I, I don't know really how they do it. I don't either. I, it might be at the same time as somebody. I, I don't know. Magic. Super magic. Super magic. Super magic. So. Um, definitely check it out and let us know what you're thinking about Mario Run in the comments below because I think it's an interesting thing. It is. Or go to Facebook, either one. I don't know which version you're listening to. So there you go. I like Super Mario Run. I think it's fun. Now, speaking of video games and one platform that tremendously supports people playing video games, Twitch. Um, Twitch is an amazing platform like community of yeah. gamers, but they're doing something interesting. They just announced mobile broadcasting uh, for vlogs and community tools. Um, and this was something that happened late this week. Um, mobile broadcasting from phones will be a new category for vlogs called IRL or in real life. Uh, and there will be updates to the community guidelines 
um, to be introduced according to the new Twitch blog post, and you could read that if you want. Um, set for next year, there'll be a native part of the app that you can do the thing and everything. Um, but updating guidelines are also also coming, which Twitch says will be simplified. The highlight is that all the restrictions on non-endemic, I don't know what that necessarily means, content will be lifted, allowing the streaming services to open, open beyond gaming and allow more streams and music, creative, and social eating. I thought that was very interesting. Oh, I others. like to yeah. let people watch me eat. Yeah. You know, like you're having a conversation. Like, hey, guys. Um, got, got you can talk about what kind of wine do you, you know, pair up with with pork or something like yeah. that so i mean it'd be good for the uh the uh wine aficionados and stuff like that i like, I like that. it yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I find this very interesting because so much of youtube is made up of vloggers that twitch adding this service that you can vlog on here and that it's going to be highly supported with part of the app dedicated just to streaming that that's a big thing yeah mm -hmm. big step forward for them yeah and i think seeing the success of facebook live and now instagram live i think they're i know this has been in the works for quite some time i think this is a big step forward though for mm -hmm. twitch and i think if twitch keeps innovating like the way they are they're going to be they're they're close to YouTube, but I think with all the the chaos that is going on on YouTube right now, with the unsub stuff going on and people not knowing how to communicate the right way, and Pewdie YouTube completely denying that that's even happening, and they pretty much did it in a really condescending way in a video, like this is not even happening. I don't know what you're talking about, and th they're like, we looked at a hundred cases. A hundred cases. Y'all want to know how many people are on YouTube? <laughs> Over a billion people use I YouTube about to say, think daily. Of just just mm. how many people are subscribed to PewDiePie? Yeah, and let me let me say this <laughs> yeah. for, for the whole PewDiePie thing. If you don't understand PewDiePie's comedy or his humor when he's talking like this, what do you expect? That it was. It, he he did another video. He's like, maybe I should have been a little bit more transparent with that. He's like, but I thought people understood humor. Yeah. But that that was a whole ploy to get attention to what was actually happening. So making that as a thing, but like his video got an extra six million people not only to subscribe to his account, but to know what's going on with the YouTube community. Yeah. So guys. If we hit 50 million subs, <laughs> we'll delete this channel. Or another channel. They're, they're like, all right, bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think Twitch is doing a good job. They're very hands-on with their community. Like they, they seem to be, because it's a bunch of gamers, and gamers are very, it's a community. Like yeah, we're, you we're do, connected. Yeah, and I think that's a good thing. And they already have on-demand type stuff. It's not as good as YouTube, but it's getting better and better. Um, so I, I think YouTube's got something to watch out for. I know they've been having something to watch out for for a while, but it's getting better and better in coming form. So uh, excited about that.